Hey folks, on this episode of the Houndsman XP Podcast, we've got another great one for you. We've got Mr. Butch Spear, the president of the Vermont Bear Hound Association, on the podcast. I went to him directly to talk to him about a YouTube video that is floating around out there that was produced by a landowner, and Mr. Spear was the star of the show. I want you to pay special attention to how he handles himself in that video. It's the Gold Shaw Farm podcast or YouTube channel. You can find a link to that whole video on the Houndsman XP podcast group on Facebook. We've got the whole video posted there. A lot of you have been commenting on that, but there are several things that he did that were right on the money and but the thing that's not on the money is you don't hear the complete story you only see one side of an edited youtube video so butch agreed to come on the podcast to tell his side of it he's an outstanding ambassador for houndsman and i look forward to future uh, communication and a, and a good relationship with Butch moving forward so that we can get messages out from Vermont to you, the houndsman. But this episode is one that you absolutely will glean a lot of information from, and you have to look for the pearls of wisdom in the way Butch handled this incident and hear his story. It's going to be very informative. It's going to help you develop your own narrative and show you how to handle incidents just like this if you ever are confronted or have to deal with this. I want to tell all of our Patreon supporters, I want to tell you guys thanks a lot. Man, we just did our Dakota 283 giveaway, uh, almost a $500 prize package for our Patreon supporters to pay back the support that you've given us you guys are the backbone of this podcast, and I appreciate appreciate every one of you. You guys are send us great messages and writing great reviews, so thank you very much. I also want to thank every listener out there. If you're listening to this podcast, this is about building bridges among the hunting, hunting community. So, so please share this with your deer hunting friends, your trapping friends, your your. You know, if you're an elk hunter, there's a message here for you uh, as well. And and we want you to be included in our community. Everyone, thanks for your support of the Houndsman XP podcast. We're glad that you're spending time with us this week on this podcast. We got a hot track here. It's a box shaker. Let's get the doors of that old South Dog box opened up. And it's time to dump the box. Houndsman XP fans, if you have been paying any t- attention at all to things going on in our hound hunting world, then you have seen the stories out there about the Gold Shaw Farm and that YouTube channel. And this has been bothering me a lot. Uh, I've been paying attention to it a lot. I've been watching the comments and different things that have been coming in on this this whole video, but I felt like we needed to get more information about this story and i am absolutely honored to have mr butch spear from the vermont bearhound association on the podcast to give us a different look at this thing and showcase what the vermont bearhound association is doing so welcome to the houndsman xp podcast butch thank you very much yeah, so uh, you are the president of the, the Vermont Association, is that correct? Yes, it is correct. And how did how'd you get that job? I was the only one that did not back up when they wanted to know who wanted to be their president. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did not campaign for it or anything. I had been a member for, I'm going to say, maybe eight or nine years. The At that time, the president was stepping down. The secretary, who was his wife, was stepping down. And 
they kind of asked me if he stayed on as vice president, would I take the presidency? And I said, yes, because he's an awesome man. He's an ex-state trooper and everything else. He, he knows his stuff, and I knew I'd have guidance, even if I did goof up. But he's definitely vice president, so uh, I had it all alone. <laughs> did you did you get so, your did you get your wife recruited too? Is she the new secretary? My wife is my right hand and half of my left hand. Yeah, she does more work in this club than myself or anyone else involved. Wow, that's a, that's a good thing. Nice to thing to say about your wife. It really is. Well. It, it's the truth, and that's all you're going to hear today from me is the truth. You know, we seem to have a theme on this show. We've got a we run a whole different podcast on Thursdays called "The Truth About Coon Hunting," and so today yep. we're going to hear the truth about what's going on in Vermont. But uh, I I'm want to set this up for our listeners to to explain how this whole. Uh, YouTube video thing has all come around and tell your side of this thing, Butch, so that I know that you can tell by watching that video that it has been edited and that uh, it's been edited to Mr. Shaw's advantage so that he can he can get his message out there. But the Houndsman XP podcast is about telling your story and getting your message out there. So, you know, kind of set this up for us as far as how long have you been bear hunting? Uh, this fall is the 17th year I've been hunting with my own hounds. Mm -hmm. And how long have you as been? Far a, as, how, as far as bear hunting, I've been a coon hunter since I was six. Okay, that's what I wanted to get to. You've been a houndsman for 63 years of your life. 63 years of my life I have been a hunter with hounds. Okay. And how did you get involved in bear hunting? I... <clears throat> I used to cut a lot of wild game up for different people that were lucky enough to harvest any. A buddy of mine had a pack of hounds, and I cut up a couple deer for our bears for him one year. And the next year, he come along just before the first of September, and he says, "Hey, if we shoot a bear this year, are you going to cut it up for me?" I says, "Nope." He goes, "What do you mean?" I said, "I ain't going to cut it up unless you take me out hound hunting and bear hunting." <laughs> right. And he's, he says, well, get, get, get in the truck. I <laughs> said, well, where do you want me to meet? 4.30 the next morning, I was in his truck. We were out hunting. Great. It took us, took us nine different times to find a bear that treed. It was an ugly bear. It had to hurt some dogs. Not bad, but they were bleeding. And <clears throat> I wasn't supposed to shoot a bear unless it was over 200 pounds, according to him. This bear dressed 182 pounds, so it was over a 200-pound bear. Right. And it was the first bear in 42 years in Vermont State that I I hunted for 42 years in order to see my first bear and the first one I ever shot, and that was with a pack of hounds. And you were and hooked. I was, and I was hooked. Actually, I was hooked the first day out without seeing a bear, but... Um, and I've had hounds for 17 years now, and I've worked myself up to where I can honestly say I have a very good pack of hounds. Good. Yeah, that's if, that's great. If, if some, someone calls me and wants to go out over here, all i got to do is get their butt in the front seat of my truck, and we'll go out. And most days we see a bear, but not all days. They do goof up. I, I, know, what you're, I know what you're saying. <laughs> I know exactly yeah. what you're saying. Sometimes... You see the bear, and uh, sometimes you see the wrong end of the bear, and sometimes you just get a glimpse of the bear. Uh, yeah, they don't all. They don't. You don't catch them all. It would be a pretty boring world if that that's the way it was. This is true, and that's why they call it hunting, not killing or seeing. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, so, how many years have you been hunting bear in the area where these videos have have been? filmed 16 years i've hunted in that general location driving around his this man's property uh five years ago he purchased i think it's five years uh, five years and a little bit that he purchased this land it, 
up till the day that I met him that that uh, YouTube video was made. I had never knowingly seen him. I know I had never talked to him, and I had never even the previous owner. I had never stepped foot on that 150, 60 acres of land. Mm -hmm. I had run dogs. My dogs had run bears through there, but they never stopped. I have farmers in that area that uh, beg me to kill every bear I see, which I will not do because then I don't have any to run tomorrow. I will not kill a sow with cubs, and I will not shoot a cub. So sometimes a sow gets killed, but as far as we know, we've never killed one with with cubs. Mm -hmm. And typically, we'd like to shoot a male bear that's 150, 200 pounds or bigger. Yeah. So so yeah. this guy, the guy that's doing this video, I just, I just know the uh, um, channel that it's on. It's called Gold Shaw Farm, and I'm not sure what. If the guy's name is Gold Shaw, uh, do you do you have any information for our listeners on that? His last name is Gold. Okay. Yeah, and it used to be the old Shaw Farm in the town of Peachum. Okay. And it was run run by an older gentleman that who is no longer around, as far as I know, uh, because of old age. And like I say, he purchased. Mr. Shaw, or Mr. Gold, uh, bought this farm or moved in there just about five years ago. Okay. All right. That gives us some clarity on who this guy is. Um, yep. So how many? How how much of this area is private property versus public hunting area uh, surrounding the the Gold Shaw farm there? Within probably two miles of his driveway, it is all private property. Okay. There is some state land a little bit further away. It's called the Peachum Bog. It is no fun when you're in there. Okay. <laughs> we started out this year, training season. We walked a mile and a half into this bog and treated a I guesstimate, and the kid that was with me guesstimate a 400-pound bear. First bear of the year was the biggest one we've seen yet. And then we walked a mile and a half back to the truck. We were wet. We were sweating. It was fun. <laughs> so if you say bog, I can only imagine what kind of fun oh, yeah. you were having. <laughs> uh, there's, there's only lots of it. There's only six inches of water, but there's a foot and a half to two foot of mud underneath it. Well, that answer. That answers my next question. I was going to ask you if you floated your hat in it anywhere, but it sounds like you had, you ran more of a risk of losing some shoes and stuff. Yeah, I I have been armpit deep in that place, but it wasn't this year. Right. All right. Well, set us yeah. up. Set us up on what happened the day that uh, I. It's my understanding. Is there one video or is there two videos out now? Um, there's probably three or four. Okay. I, I know I have looked at three different videos. Okay. And and you uh, one, one was the original that was edited. One was a follow up of the first one. He put some stuff back in. And I just looked at one this morning that I was told yesterday was out that he did a lot of dictating and uh writing words over pictures and stuff and okay. and uh and in and, and, and in all fairness to Mr. Gold, it does act like he has learned a little bit about what does go on because he did walk into the tree and back out with us that day. He has learned and he is doing a little studying. He has learned that it's not all that he's been told it is. So I gotta but, ask I gotta ask you this because one of the one of the uh uh videos has a tag on it that says hounds on my property again. You've only been, your hounds have only been on his property one time. Is that correct? They have only treed on his property one time. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. Okay. Well, set us up, set us up on what happened the day that you were videotaped. What happened leading up to the point that you pulled up and, and, um, 
you, you were met with a video camera. Okay. <clears throat> Myself and my son and my grandson and one of my best friends were hunting. We came up through from the town we live in through another town and into this township. And we went on to land where a guy is a commercial corn grower. He has hundreds of acres of land of corn, and he wants us to kill every bear we can out of his corn, which we cannot do, will not do. Number one, we can only kill one per person per year. Number two, if I kill all the bears, what do I have my hounds for? I won't have anything to chase. Mm-hmm. So anyways, we went into his corn, we started a bear, it made two loops around this humongous cornfield, and then it headed out, and knowing the area, hunting it 16 years, we headed out to the tar road, and uh, the bear had already crossed, dogs were crossing, and they went out and made a loop to the right, went out behind a big fancy horse farm, went down into the next, bog, well, it wasn't a bog, swamp. Well, it's nicer than a bog, so it'll, it's a swamp. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> and they were treed. So we have um, our pack of hounds are down in there treeing, and like I said uh, just a few minutes ago, I do have a good pack of hounds. And as a general rule, and 98% of the time when they start barking tree, there's a bear in a tree. Right. So, and I said to the guys, I said, I don't know whose land that is. And we debated a little bit. Well, let's just go up here. There's a, a roadway that goes out through to a house way out beyond his property. And I says, I, I do have permission from three houses out through there to go on their property. But I don't know where the bear is. So we could have snuck in and okay. got my dog get out of there. Mm-hmm. But me being me, I'm going to do the right thing. I actually, a neighbor across the road come out, and I asked him who owns this property. I was hoping it was him because he gives us permission. Before we get there, let's let's. Yep. I want to back up. How far away from where you originally struck this track uh, did these hounds did you check your GPS, see what your total track distance or anything was at the time, uh, the, from the time you struck the bear until, until you treed the bear? Uh, I'll back up one step. I'm a dinosaur, remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I have trouble with uh, GPSs and stuff. I know how to use one, but I'm not good. I know there's a function on there that would track every dog, and you can bring it up. Mm-hmm. But... I have measured it by truck, by my truck, where the bear crossed the road, and his driveway. Uh huh. His driveway was a little bit further down the road than his property line. Is eight tenths of a mile. Okay. So we started, let's say, seven tenths of a mile from his driveway, unknowing that the bear was going to go onto his property not knowing the man and what his thoughts were. Mm -hmm. There were a few old posted signs which would lead a rational person to believe someone does not want us to hunt their property. It was not legally posted, so at that moment I could legally step foot on his land. And, and talk about legally posted in the state of Vermont. Because yep. it, it changes from state to state. Like Indiana, for instance, it doesn't have to be posted. You have to get permission. But in Vermont, yep. there is a different law. So let's let's cover that real quick. Okay. If you are uh, posting your property and you want it to be legal, you have to be signs on, which uh, I don't remember the dimensions, but they have a certain size po- so- sign at a color that stands out on each corner and no more than 400 feet apart. Okay. So every 400 feet, there has to be a sign. Okay. And and technically, 100% legal, if there's one missing because a squirrel chewed it up or some 
buddy snuck through at night and tore it down. And I, I said that just because somebody else is going to say it. Um, it's not legal. But also in Vermont, it's a polite and courteous thing to do to go ask permission to be on a guy's land. Right. And I own land myself, so I know how I want people to act on my, my land. If right. they come to me and ask permission to hunt, we'll discuss it. We'll tell them where they can hunt on my property, and that's it. And if they don't like it, they can stay off. Right. So, and but, and while while we're on this subject, it's kind of a rabbit path. But but I own property too here in Indiana, and yep. uh, uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to have people here hunting. But I am a person that if I hear hounds treat on my property then I'm going to go see who it is. And, oh, sure. And I, I try to, I, I want to be respected in the aspect that people ask to come on my place. But, and, and of course, it's not that big a deal for me, you know, and I, it's, yeah. it, but I still, I still, as a landowner, have the right to know who's here. Yeah, I so, agree. So there, I go, agree. go ahead. That's the reason. I drove down the road when I found out from the neighbor across the road who owned the property. Mm -hmm. I drove down and drove in Mr. Gold's driveway. Okay. He happened to be standing a little bit further back toward a barn. I got out of my truck. I always I carry cards with me. It has my name, address, phone number, and my wife's email on it. Okay. And I walked up to him. I said, this is who I am. I want you just so I, I give you one of these because I don't want it. want you to think I'm sneaking around trying to get away with something. Mm -hmm. I thought you handled and, that. I, I saw that part on the video. And I, yep. I, I thought there were a few things that I picked up there. I picked up the fact that here's a guy that pulled into this driveway. He's, he's, he's pretty cool-headed. He's level-headed. He's, he's approaching this situation. Uh, the way it should be, you were prepared with business cards to hand to yep. him. And I thought that was the main thing is here's a guy he's got. And I didn't know if it was a construction card with just your name, but that is a card that you had made up for this particular situation. Is that right? I had had my wife make them up for me, and I've been handing them out for four or five years since it's getting harder to get property to hunt on. But it, it lets the people know. I'm not trying to sneak around. I'm not trying to be a, a thief or nothing. This is who I am. Right. And you can check it out. And I don't have very many enemies. Yeah. All right. Or I didn't. <laughs> Look, we'll, we'll save that part for a few minutes because I definitely okay. want to talk about the fallout from from these right. videos. Yeah. So, so the whole time there, Mr. Shaw or Mr. Gold was... Uh, did he immediately start videotaping as soon as he saw you pull in, or how did that he all start? He had the camera in his hand when I drove in the yard. Was it, a, was it his phone, or was it an actual video camera? It was a camera on a uh, selfie stick. Okay. All right. The man, so I found out, the man goes around and videos day-to-day -day things on his own property mm -hmm. and market it markets it on youtube right right yeah he gets paid for the number of people that view his 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 videos right right now he he tries to put himself across as a vermont farmer mm -hmm. well i asked him i said what do you market on your farm i have free range and geese okay and i says no nah, that ain't right i says i'm gonna I'm going to have a bill made up that you can't have free-ranging geese in Vermont. <laughs> and he said, what are, you, what are you talking about? I said, well, I don't like geese, so I don't think you should have them. <laughs> and he, he snickered a little bit. He didn't get ugly, but he saw a point I was putting across. Did because you... I don't like geese, I ought to make a bill, have a bill go through the state house saying that you can't do it in Vermont. Did he? So, what was his demeanor when when he started videotaping? Did it start out confrontational, or did he edit out some of his comments? Was he was he rational in his original approach, or did he did he do some editing on that video to make it appear like he was he was rational? The first 
very first part of it, I would. I don't believe he edited much out. He was a little bit off the wall because of the coon hunting episode a week earlier. Okay, so he had had coon hunters there prior to yeah. that. Okay, yeah, and and we he don't. Had a, he had a bad episode with some hunters late at night when you coon, hunt coon. Okay, uh, the the dogs ran a cover. Uh, so I heard, ran a coon through a culvert, and they ended up on his property. Okay, and we'll just and, leave, we'll just leave that part there uh, yep. on that that episode, and and I'll try to track down those guys and and talk yep. to them as well. But, but so I so did see, I did see part of a video that somebody had. Whether uh, it was one of my buddies showing me a uh, Facebook page that somebody put out or what, but okay, the the coon hunters handled it pretty rough okay but so did mr gold yeah and often often law enforcement that's what it, that was a, that was going to be my next question for you uh butch yeah. is was law enforcement ever called during your incident there was luckily there was no need to call him um he he told me immediately as soon as he found out i had hounds on his property trina bear he immediately, get off my property, get out of here. I tried to talk to him and get out of here, get off my property. So I walked to my truck. Mm-hmm. And then he says, well, explain yourself. So, of course, I turned around. I says, I started a bear in a cornfield up here. It went across the road. It went onto three other people's land, went through two more cornfields, went through a swamp, ended up in your swamp. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I don't want your dogs on my property. I says, all right, would it be sensible to say you should give me permission to go in and retrieve my dogs? No firearms. We won't take any guns. We won't harass the bear. I was just going to catch my dogs up, put them on a leash, and walk them out. Would it be sensible to, to ask for permission for that? And he says, you can go get your dogs. And he went with so you. Felt, he went with you, correctly. real good right there. And he says, can I go with you? And Great. He actually, he actually edited this sentence out. He says, can I go with you? I says, it's your property. You can do whatever you want on it. But I says, I would love to have you walk in with me. Great. So that didn't get printed. Okay. Um, so... At that point, he, his demeanor changed a little bit, and you guys were actually communicating effectively at this point. It wasn't a shouting match. It wasn't confrontational anymore. Um, he was, But he continued to ask you some hard questions throughout the video. No, that's correct. Okay. At, at no time was there yelling. No time was there swearing or threatening. Okay. So I, I feel... By either, that- by either side. By either side. Okay. And, what do you, what do you think this, is what do you think his motivation was for not not wanting you there? Um, <laughs> I, I'll give you some, you know, a little leeway to speculate here. But do you think it was because he's had some bad experiences with other houndsmen, or do you think it's a misguided uh, thinking about what hound hunting is, or what hunting in general is? Did he ever make any mention of that that he hunts? On his property? Did, did he give you any indication of that? Um, supposedly, he is not against hunting. He okay. is against hound hunting. Okay. Supposedly, he does deer hunt on his own property. Okay. And um, do, does he raise uh, geese and, and livestock there for food consumption? He, he has free-ranging geese and free-ranging chickens and a guard dog, as far as I know. That's all he has for animals on his property. Okay, okay. So yeah. it's kind of hard from some, for someone who was born in Vermont, been in Vermont more than he's been out of Vermont, and still lives in Vermont, to say he's a farmer. <laughs> but <laughs> we I, believe in cows and horses and pigs. Yeah. That's yeah. a farm. I like you me know, I like me some hog meat and I like it when it's homegrown and smoked in my smokehouse. There you go. Yeah. And, I'm, and that, 
I'm on my the same page I, with you. My wife and I, we raise our own beef, we raise our own pork, we raise our own rabbits, our own chicken. Uh, hopefully, I harvest a deer, and when I choose to, and I'm out of bear meat, I harvest a bear and eat it. Yeah. Other yeah. than that, I don't chew the bear. And how many how many bears do you think that you've that you've caught and and treed and freed, so to speak? You know, where where you have just allowed your dogs to tree a bear. You walk in, you look at a bear, maybe allow people to take pictures, and the the bear is is freed to to run another day. I can tell that one hundred percent truthfully. Exactly. Since the first day of June, I did not hunt the first day of June. I took my wife to the beach because it's our anniversary. Okay. Second day of June was the first time I hunted this year. Until today, we've treed 47 bears. Okay. And I have not killed a bear. There has not been a bear killed in front of my dogs yet this year. Okay. Last year, total was 65 bears we saw all season. There was three kids under the age of 10 that shot their first bear. I had a 63-year-old doctor I took out. He shot his first bear ever. And my brother and the kid that hunts with me shot a bear. So we shot, we killed six out of 65 last year. It's not because every bear you treed had, was a sound cubs. It's just... That there was it's no because we chose not to kill them. There you go. Yeah. That's what I was looking there, there for. There was multiple male bears there. Um, there was nothing real big, so nobody got wound right up about it. But I mean, three kids under ten years old shot their first bear. Even though it was a hundred ten, fifteen pound bear, it was a monster to them. Exactly, it was a trophy of a lifetime for those kids. And no they've doubt. been out with me this year. They're hooked. Yeah, they love it. They love the hounds. Well, let me let me ask you this. So, did you have any kids with you the day that this incident occurred? A ten-year-old. Okay. And did that, you were you able to discuss with him afterwards about this incident? About you know everything that transpired there? Did you have any conversation with your with your ten-year-old hunter or the group of hunters afterwards? Oh, well, we had plenty of conversation. <laughs> and but. The ten-year-old, ten-year-old did say, he says, he was my grandson. He says, "Gram, we weren't going to shoot that bear anyways. It was too small. Yeah. It was only a seventy-five to eighty-pound bear." The thing that the thing that I noticed as I watched the video was um, the demeanor of you and all of your everybody in your party. I. Of course, this was an edited video, but I saw no one lose their temper, nobody getting a screaming match, none of that sort of thing took place. Was there anything that took place like that that was edited out of the video? No. At, at no time did anyone on either side raise their voice to a yell or swear or flip each other off. Right. Right. There was no confront. It was it was confrontational, but it was done in a civil matter manner. In a civil matter. Okay. And that that's the way I have an agreement with Mister Gold. Anytime he wants to sit down and discuss hunting with hounds, and anybody he wants to bring along, we will sit down. There'll be no yelling, no screaming, no swearing, and no pointing fingers. We'll and, sit down and discuss stuff like two men, or three men, or five men, whatever. And that's the way it'll be. So you're going to be an ambassador for the Vermont bear hunters, just like you are I, as the president. I, I have been since the day I met the guys in the club. Great. I love what the club does, and I love what we stand for. And I am, I'm, I'm known around the world now, but I'm an, an ambassador too. Right, right. <laughs> And it sounds like um, sounds like you're doing a great job at that, Butch. Um, so, did Mr. Gold give you any indication? He said that he was against hunting with hounds, but did he give you any indication? Did he say why, or did you have that conversation at all with him? His only thing that he was so dead set it for or against, whichever way you're looking at it, is 
personal property rights. He should have the right to say what goes on on his property. And other than that, he didn't say he's advocating to shut us down or anything. He just said the laws ought to change so that personal property owners have the right to say what goes on in his land. Do you agree with and that I, or do you disagree with that? I semi-agree, but not to the... I own... Being a landowner, mm-hmm. I have the right to say what goes on on my land. Right. But I need to understand other people have the right to do what they choose to do as long as they're not infringing on me terribly or whatever. Right, right. And and I think you also have to take into consideration as a landowner that sometimes it, it there was no ill intent by you or anyone in your party. You didn't want to have a dog treat on that property. You know, no. that, so uh, it wasn't done intentionally. I, I'm curious what would happen if he had a neighbor that had cows that entered your prop yeah. entered his I, property. I gotta take just I gotta take two seconds here and I gotta talk to my wife for a second. There's a guy banging on my door. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. Okay. All right. So so I'm just curious what, what his reaction would be if it was the neighbor's cows that got on his property. Would he deny would he deny entry or say that he's gonna stop cattle farming or you know, yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I can't even begin to answer that. Sure, I mean it's uh, just a talking point. Yeah, I, trying to. Yeah, it's. I, it's I, uh, I don't understand. Like as a landowner, if if my neighbor's cattle get over on my property and they come up and say, "Hey, Chris, man, we got cows on your place. You care if we go back there and get it?" It's like, absolutely. Let's. I'll, I'll go back. What can I do to help you? Um, right. oh, yeah. if, if the neighbor's yeah. dog is over here, but it seems like it's a deal where uh, if if you guys had if you'd been walking your dog your your Yorkie Doodle down the road in front of his house and it peeled off and it's running back through the property and you pull in there and say hey I was walking my dog and all of a sudden it's back on your property his demeanor probably would have changed or could have been a lot different but it seems like he was triggered by the fact that you were hunting and now there's hounds on his property and that's what triggered his whole reaction i i i believe so okay uh, it, it, the one thing is the property the rights and then the hound hunting he does not agree with hound hunting even though supposedly he hunts himself deer hunts yeah i would so, like i'd like to talk to him about that part i may i may even reach out to him and see if see if he wants to uh explain what about hound hunting he is against but so i i I would be very surprised if mr gold did not allow you to ask him questions okay yeah i would be very surprised if he just plain shut up okay Uh, because he does want to get it across to everyone that he doesn't want people on their on his land and he does not want hound hunting. Okay. All right. Even though he has a guard dog that is actually a trained killer on his property, those guard dogs that guard livestock are trained to chase whatever else they're not guarding off and or kill them if they want to fight. Right. Right, I saw. I saw. Did see some videos from him. He's got a great Pyrenees out there. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, and my, that's in my with dogs his are trained to use their nose and track a track a, a scent. Right. So right. You know, um, I don't see why my dogs are the bad dogs. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just a matter of perspective here on on his part. And uh, so, tell us I about. Agree. Tell us about. It's it's. I'm trying to figure out a way to transition into this part of our conversation. Um, but I think it's important that anyone that listens to this podcast and hears your story also understands what you do uh, away from uh, this isolated incident that Mr. Gold videotaped. But tell our listeners, as president of the Vermont association there the bear hound association you know what kind of things do you do for your community what kinds of things are you guys doing for youth uh, 
you know, go give us give us some of that information, Mr. Spear. The number one thing that I thoroughly enjoy bragging about is we spend at least ten thousand dollars a year on sending kids from the age of twelve to sixteen years old to the Vermont State Conservation Camp. At that camp, they learn boating, canoeing, kayaking, fishing, how to tie flies. They go for nature walks and look at bugs and trees and uh, brush. Uh, they do take their hunter safety course so that they can legally uh, own or use a firearm, go hunting. Um, they shoot twenty twos. Uh, shotguns, and I do believe now they're they're using muzzle loaders. Yeah, they use bow and arrows. They get the bow stamp. They uh, can take a trapper's course, so they can be certified for trapping. Um, it's just a fantastic week long camp that costs two hundred and fifty bucks a piece. Mm-hmm. There are kids in Vermont that. They've never seen 250 bucks. If they want to go, we will pay for them to go. So you're telling so, me that a bunch of bunch of bear hunters from Vermont that are the scourge of the earth are sending kids to camp, summer camp. You're being you're being so polite describing <laughs> me. <laughs> but yes, we we do that, and also the state has a teachers in the wild. Um, Teachers can go there for a week. They can get their three credits they need every so often for ongoing education so they can be still be certified as a teacher. Um, we sponsor, if we can each year, we sponsor two people, two teachers. That's $650 a piece. They get their credits. They get five, about $500 worth of books and stuff that they can take back to their classrooms and teach kids about what they learned in this class, about the outdoors, about conservation, about wildlife, about flowers and trees. So we, we got thinking, you know, yeah, we thought first year we heard about it and stuff. Yeah, we'll sponsor one. But then we got thinking. Kids cost us 250 a apiece. Teacher cost us six fifty, right? But the teacher has fifteen kids in her class. Yeah. If she teaches each one of them kids something, we're further ahead sponsoring the teacher. That's that's. But instead uh, of throwing the kids out, we also sponsor the kids too. So six fifty times two is thirteen hundred dollars plus up to ten thousand dollars we spend on kids. There's thirteen hundred or thirteen thousand. Uh, yeah. Yep. Imagine. Money that a little little organization of approximately a hundred and eighty members. We spend that money every year, and have been since before I got involved in it. There's a lot of good things that I'm hearing here, Butch, about uh, the way you guys are conducting business up there and, and the way that you're investing in the future through education programs. And even down to, to the example that you set in the video with your business card, I mean, there's a lot of good things that are happening there. And I can't, I don't think anybody can say that you're not doing your due diligence to, um, represent houndsmen in the best possible light and so what other sorts of things is the vermont vermont bear hound association involved in well we we go to two to three fairs a year to put information out there and talk with people about hound hunting and and what the bear hound association does um Oh, let's see. The Yankee Classic Sportsman Show is usually on. We go to that, uh, and we, we, we try to get in the public's face all we can, politely and, and informationally, and to try to save hunting, fishing, and trapping in Vermont, especially the hound hunt. Right. Yeah, what a worthy and, cause. Uh, that's because... The 180 of us that are uh, 
officially members, only probably half of them actually own hounds. Really? The others are people that believe we're doing the right thing. And who can argue with them? You know, who can argue yeah. with you that you're not? You're yeah. you're not simply you're not simply putting together YouTube videos to get your clicks and likes and comments up and sell sponsorship. You're actually raising money and and investing back in the community. And that's the message yeah. that at Houndsman XP we have always tried to get out there is right. make those investments bigger than yourself. Come out of the woods, right. do your work up front, um, and and secure your future that way. Because, right. yeah, we we also we donate to the 4-H Shooting Club. We right. donate to the Boy Scouts of America. They did they got a thing going on here in another week or two. We donated money to them. The Shooting Club. We usually buy a muzzle loader and give it to them. Mm-hmm. And the first time we did that, well, we we want some money. Well, <clears throat> you take this muzzle loader, you make up two hundred tickets, sell the ticket for two bucks a piece or ten bucks a piece. Right. All right. So, ten times two hundred, two thousand dollars. Right. Right. That you're going to have instead of us donating two hundred dollars to you. Right. Which do you want best? And they had a ball doing it the first year. We still donate a muzzle loader every year. They still raffle it off. Because mm-hmm. they understood with just a little bit of effort, instead of $200, they're getting 2000 Right, right. And that was us woodchucks that live in the woods or nasty, <laughs> rotten people that kill bears and abuse our dogs and <laughs> force them to go hunting. Right. Caught them. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, I want to be like me because I feel great about what I do with and for the public. You should. Um, well, Butch, I want to I want to thank you for your time. But before we go and before we wrap this up, I would really like for people to hear uh, where they could go to support the Vermont Bear Hound Association and that's the only way we are going to uh, that that's uh, I'm not going to say the only way but the, a great way to secure our future and and help Vermont Hound uh, Bear Hound Association out but tell us where people can go to either get a membership or support your organization yeah um the Vermont Bear Hound Association has its own website. Uh, I do believe it's vermontbearhoundassociation.com. Uh, we have a website. We have, uh, of course, on the computer that I'm nixed with. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyways, um, there would be a mailing address on there um, that we could get envelopes by snail mail. Or you can put an email on there. My wife checks it every day. And if it's something that I feel I need to talk to someone about, she will email that person back and say, please call Butch between such and such a time and and whatever and talk with him. Great, great. And if if somebody wants to become a member, it's $10. Mm Mm-hmm. You send me a check with $10 in it, uh, worth 10 bucks in an envelope i will send you back a membership card wow that's that's a pretty cheap price to support a hunting tradition in your state i agree 100 percent. but yep. if we have more people do it we would have bigger numbers when it comes to being in a state house this fall and winter when the people who don't like what we do start presenting bills like your dogs need to be on a leash at all times. And and that's I don't and that's something I don't that we know need a marathon to marathon runner that can keep up with a dog for two, three, four hours. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Especially going through the woods with a dog on a leash. Exactly. And that's and something we've all other... we've all got to keep in mind here is the fact that your legislative season or your session is getting ready to take off here in the very near future. And when Vermont has had a rough road to hoe the past few years with with some different groups that are rising up to try to stop hound hunting in the state of Vermont, and 
uh, you can bet that these videos are picking up traction and support from from those anti-hunting groups that want that stopped. So uh, $10, go to the website, Vermont Bear Hound Association, and, and step up there and donate. Before we go, Butch, I do want, I'd skipped something that I think is important to this whole story. And what kind of reaction have you gotten from uh, this video? Well, I'll start out with the good part. Okay. The locals in the area, people in Vermont State, the majority of them are, you did good, Butch, you kept your cool, you did the right thing. I've got emails, phone, phone messages, um, letter in the mail. You did the right thing without punching the guy. Yeah. I've got numerous emails and phone calls from people I assume are out of the state, out of the country even, because of the, the uh, YouTube video. I am the most filthy, rotten names you could ever think of. Mm-hmm. I am married to the ugliest, fattest, blah, blah, blah woman in the world. They've never seen her. It's right. far from the truth. I... <clears throat> um, have you had any threats, physical violence? I have had three threats. One was from someone named Morgan, who is Mr. Gold's first name, but I definitely would say I don't believe he would ever threaten me in words. Right. On paper. But stop hunting near a certain farm or I will shoot you. Yeah. Okay. The other day was, you ought to stop hunting in a certain area or else you will be shot. One guy explained elaborately how he would use buckshot to shoot me. Mm -hmm. um, another one, I will bleep out the nasty word, but my wife answered the phone thinking it was her sister because her sister's ID number comes through on the caller ID as private caller. Mm -hmm. About 2 o'clock in the afternoon one day, it come up private caller. So my wife answered the phone. Hello. And this guy or girl or it or whatever he was come right out without saying hi or anything. Why don't you go out and kill yourself so you don't have to put up with that effing a-hole? And hung up. He didn't have nuts enough to see her, what her reaction was. Hmm. So, don't I'm you assuming they're not locals, they're not people in Vermont State. Yeah. Don't and you that is what I have against this World Wide Web, this great, wonderful computer. I like living in the backwoods. If I have a problem with somebody and I can find them, we're going to take care of the problem. We're going to discuss it. Right. Right, but I can't because it's they sign their their callback uh, number or whatever you want to call it. Uh, email address is blankety 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 blanky dot com. Right, yeah, it's definitely a cowardly way to approach a, a conflict or try to reach. There's no there's no uh, ability for conflict resolution. They're just simply being hateful. And I think it's yeah. I think it's extremely ironic that people who try to portray themselves as social justice warriors and champions of animal rights that they would be willing to put an animal's life and say they will do anything to save an animal's life but threaten another human being. That strips right. them of all credibility at that point. And oh, yeah. and it's all too common when you get into animal rights extremism with these people. So I wanted to make sure we brought that up and, and covered that part because I think it exposes the, uh, and, and erodes the credibility of these animal rights extremists who are trying to get laws passed to outlaw what we do as barbaric and, and brutal and violent. And yet they're right. willing to call your wife 
and make comments like they do and threaten you with physical harm. That, that yep. just totally undermines their credibility at that point. They, so They are more than welcome to drive up my driveway and confront me if they want to. Yeah. I welcome anybody that wants to come up and discuss. Right, right. Other than that, I hope they have a great day. I, I understand. I understand. Well, Butch, thank you very much for spending time out of your day and uh, sharing your side of the story and telling us the truth. And to a dinosaur like me, how do I get to hear what we just did? <laughs> how about until after we're off of here? Uh, I will give you complete instructions on how you can you can hear what we just did. All right. I appreciate that very much, and I appreciate your time to go on here. Oh, it's my pleasure. This is what Houndsman XP is all, all about. We, we work tirelessly to ensure that we have a future okay. for our lifestyle as Houndsman and represent Houndsman in a positive light. I think you're doing a great job, Butch, w with the way you conducted yourself throughout the whole incident to to help other houndsmen understand uh how to how to deal with situations like this and that's what it's all about we've got to figure out how to represent ourselves in the best possible light if we're going to survive so i agree 100 percent. i appreciate you butch we we close every one of these podcasts out with our tagline and until next time you follow your hounds and i'll follow mine I appreciate that and have a good time doing it.